Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back to Celebrating Act 2. Here we are with Manny Pacheco, the forgotten Hollywood historian par excellence, and my also excellence par guy, but if you don't play golf, John <laughs> Coleman. Uh, no par for me? Just that oh, You're not a golfer. <laughs> you're not a golfer. Hey, Manny, um, you are the maven. You're the movie maven. Yeah, maven. And I know you have your favorites, besides being a historian and extremely knowledgeable on all parts of Hollywood. I know you have your favorite films. I want to point you towards comedies because it seems to me that comedies get short shrift, particularly from the Academy. Um, and I, I, I think comedy is very difficult to do, hard to pull off. And um, I, I want to know what your favorite comedy is. As, as John has said to me many times, by the way, he thinks that comedy is no laughing matter. So, <laughs> oh, all so right. I kind of also... look at it another way. I look at it another way, Art. Death is easy. Comedy is hard. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, both of you. I'm going to slap you both. Okay. I'll slap me for <laughs> well, me. That would be slaps. <laughs> I like to do this by decade. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're right. Comedy gets the short shrift. What I'm really kind of disturbed about is that you actually called me a maven. Isn't isn't that a woman? I'm not sure. No, 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 no. <laughs> I just... Well, wait. Then today, today, Maven is is a, a gender neutral, but Maven, oh, Maven well, has yeah. se, as a sex as a sexist term. Maven has generally referred to the male of the species, somebody who's really an expert. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, let let's move on to comedy, a safer area. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How the far 19th, back are you going to go? Where are you going to start? I'll start with the 1930s. Let's start with talkies, obviously. <clears throat> the 1930s had a variety of great comedy, social comedy, as well as uh, screwball comedy. I mean, you, you've got Bringing a Baby, sure. the Cary Grant, Catherine Hepburn piece, uh, My Man Godfrey. Uh, but for my money, you know, you have to look at the real greats, Laurel and Hardy and, and the Marx Brothers. And of course, Laurel and Hardy had Way Out West, Sons of the Desert, really wonderful pieces. And there, there could be an argument made for A Night at the Opera and Duck Soup by the Marx Brothers, but, but for me, my favorite, my personal top choice has to be the Marx Brothers' A Day at the Races. I think they really had their act down after two really wonderful films in Duck Soup and Night of the Opera. And it's just a really fun romp. And I think that they're right at the peak of their style. And I think it goes downhill after this film. So I think that this was their peak. And I think that that a day at the races is my 1930s choice. Now, my for my 1940s. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Before you yes. before you hit the 40s, I have to tell you that you just scanned over some of the greatest comedies in film, and I can't believe they all happened. Think of the diversity between um, uh, comedy groups like the Marx Brothers, Laurel and Hardy, and Bringing Up Baby. Uh, oh, I know. I agree. What a what a what a decade. Now, I'm not saying I don't like those films, but if I had to just pick one. In other words, those are all top ten on my list. Oh, I, I know. I, I'm, I'm not arguing with it. I'm just saying, what an incredible decade that yeah, was. What happened in the 40s? Yeah, the screwball comedies obviously would be in my top ten. Now, in the 1940s, I return to what I considered the best of the screwball comedies meets social commentary. And it happened early. I mean, we're talking 1940, the, the first year of this decade. And I, I, don't, I just don't think it gets any better than, uh, than the Philadelphia story. I mean, just a wonderfully written piece. Catherine Hepburn had actually purchased the play uh, so that she could star in it in the movie because she was considered box office poison. She presented it to MGM with the credo that I get to play the star and I want my, my Broadway partners, Van Heflin and Spencer Tracy, to be... Uh, in the film. Well, that didn't work out. It turned out to be Cary Grant and James Stewart, but I, that's hardly a, a you know step down. And, <laughs> and in fact, in fact, uh, Stewart wins an Academy Award, his best, his only Best Actor Oscar. But it's just a smart, well-written piece, and I just love it. Now, remember that the 1940 to 1950 is is marred by two things. One, entrance to war. So comedies were you know you, you got Heaven Can Wait and 
and uh, oh, here here comes Mr. Jordan and some of the fantasy comedies that are that yeah. are very subtle, but for out and out laughs, the Philadelphia story works for me. Yeah. Now the 1950s, you know, there are a lot of really fun films, uh, you know, but I I'm gonna pick two because I I do have like an asterisk for one. I think that the funniest film of that year, uh, of that decade, was a film that actually looked back at the silent films, and that was Robert Youngson's The Golden Age of Comedy. I, th I just think it's, it's fabulous. Now, you might argue and say, well, that doesn't count. That's really 1920s comedy and 1950s, and it's all repackaged. So yeah. let's put that aside. What would be your favorite original comedy? And again, I would have to start in 1950 with, I consider the funniest movie in just about any decade, and that's all about Eve. Most yeah. people look at me and they think, well, that's not really that. I, it's every scene is funny. Every yeah. line is funny. And if you can't see that and you only see the dramatic purposes, Betty Davis, I mean, she could do comedy. The Man Who Came to Dinner was a great example. But she is absolutely uproarious in this film, and, and, and she gets the film stolen from her by George Saunders, who's just terrific. Yeah. And her and her straight and his straight man is Ann Baxter. So I mean, you know, it's it's a great film. It won Best Picture of the Year. George Saunders won an Academy Award. It won six Academy Awards, and it was nominated for fourteen Oscars. Wow. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. That's the nineteen fifties. Now the nineteen sixties. It's all about it's a mad, 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 mad world. Yeah, you got, you know, the great race <laughs> and Tom Jones and you got all sorts of different comedies. Even The Graduate, which is really a, a one of my favorite comedies of that decade. Good satire. But it just doesn't get okay, any better wait, wait. than it's so, a mad, mad. So, so, so far it's been all about Manny and what he thinks. And we're going to keep going with you. But let's do a, let's do a little bit of a, a, a sub uh, a diversion here. What was the funniest scene? I'll give you mine in a mad, bad, bad, bad world. Okay, was oh, since he's uh, <laughs> on bed when they keep plugging and unplugging his machine and his tongue is sticking in that in, in that from there where he was in the hospital, and uh, oh, okay, that's yeah, but that's not from it. That's not from it's a mad, 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 mad well, that, world. That's from silent. Doesn't matter. Movie. That doesn't matter. That was that was the funniest <laughs> scene for me in a mad, mad, mad world, even if it wasn't in it. No, it's not. It's not. It's, in a, it's not in the movie. Doesn't matter. What are you talking? <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. I, I withdraw the question. My, well, no, I, I'll answer that question. My funniest scene in the film, although they're not my favorite actors in the film, because Terry Thomas uh, talking about bosoms is probably my, my second favorite scene, and he was just great. And, of course, Dick Sean trying to reach his mama in his car, and he's crying profusely is a great scene. Yes. For my money, the finest scene in that, in that movie of great scenes is Jim Backus trying to teach Buddy Hackett to fly a plane. You know, <laughs> and, and trying to drink an old fashioned. You know, it's it's it's, yeah. it's terrific. It's it's comedy gold. So that that's my favorite. I remember I remember Mad 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 World, because <laughs> the one scene that sticks in my mind is when it's a groaner. It's not a it's not a knee slapper. It's a groaner. It's when the I can't remember the actor kicks the bucket. Oh yeah, Smiler Grogan. Yeah, he literally <laughs> kicks the Jimmy bucket. Durante, I, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. No, no, it's fat. And of course, some people just love the the fact that the three Stooges are just standing there in their fire outfits, not <laughs> making a sound, which is so anti Three Stooges, and that makes yeah. it all funnier. So, no, no, I get it. I totally get that. All right, the sixties, nineteen seventies. I have a tie. Seventies. Yeah, nineteen seventies. I have a tie because they're just too good, and and they're both very different films. The first of which, if you love British comedy, how can you not love Monty Python and the Holy Grail? Oh, just that's true absolute cheap slapstick on a very limited budget and it never misses in every scene the life of brian is just not as good as monty python and the holy grail now the other film that i think is a very close second if not a tie is harold and maude oh Ooh, wow is that stuff. a good film i mean just wonderful film i mean it, it is so offbeat when it was first released, it was an absolute disaster. Nobody yes. went to the film. It became one of those, you know, midnight uh, uh, films that became really, really big. Yes, cult, very cultish. Very yeah. cult following film. And boy, I'll tell you, those two films right there, really hard to beat those two films. 1980s, yeah. 
again, I return to the Monty Python X esque, the Monty Python esque, uh, a fish called Wanda. Yes. And John Cleese and Eric Idle, but they're joined by really classic actors, Jamie Lee Curtis and Kevin Klein. And boy, is that a funny film? And and I think Kevin Klein just he knocks it out of the park. He wins an Oscar. He is yeah. just out of control. I mean, a he's well so deserved fun. Oscar. Yeah. Oh, yeah. a well-deserved Oscar. Just a funny film. I mean, I can still watch that film and laugh out loud, and I don't care who knows it. I, I laugh so well, hard you, at that can film. Can you watch that <laughs> film, laugh out loud, and eat French fries at the same time? No. You can't do that. I'm not good at multitasking. <laughs> Fish and chips. I'm, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just not that good a multitasker. I, I wish I was. 1980s, it's all about one of the all-time most endearing film uh, and still really, really funny. And that's simply uh, The Princess Bride. Oh. Uh, great story, Rob Reiner direction, great I, film. Uh, yes. I have to tell you, I think I would put The Princess Bride up there above all the other things you've mentioned. I know there are some greats there you go. in the 30s and 50s, but I'm sorry, Princess Bride is my... One of my all-time favorites. Absolutely. I mean, Mandy Patinkin, hello. My name is Indigo Montoya. <laughs> you killed my father. Prepare yeah. to die. Yeah. <laughs> I just love that. Just love that. I mean... I, I love the... the, the, uh, the, the uh, Wallace Shawn and... Uh, I can't think of the other guy's name. Trading Cups. Yes, yes. C Carrie Yules. Thank you. In inconceivable. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's such a great film. It's like Casablanca. It's loaded with memorable lines mm -hmm. that you'll repeat over and over and over again. Yeah. How, how do you yeah. not? Oh, just so, so wonderful. Uh, yeah, in 1990s, I picked a movie that's out and out satire. I mean, I don't think you, you really just out loud laugh at any time in the movie, but it's just overall a very funny movie because it's so quirky and offbeat, and that's Fargo. I think oh, Fargo yeah. is just a really decently funny film, and it's remarkable. It Frances McDormand wins the Academy Award not because it's a drama, but because she's funny. Mm -hmm. She's yeah. actually really, really funny. Oh, sure. Oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of oh, course. You betcha. <laughs> you betcha. <laughs> yeah. I, it, it, to me... That's the film. I mean, it's just, it's so good. It's just, it's just wonderfully good. Um, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe I should just stop right there. What do you think? Right. Yeah. No, no. It, it, break the barrier. Go past 2000. No, no, at least. no, no. Because Sid Caesar can't help us anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I think I want to give it a, a rest there. Uh, I think that, um, other films this decade that I, I will say, uh, uh, this century that I think are really funny that will probably be considered in the future, uh, Stan and Ollie, the tribute to Laurel and Hardy, mm -hmm. Promising Young Woman, another great satirical film in the vein of Fargo, mm -hmm. uh, really yeah. well done. I, I think actually The Social Network is very humorous. I think that is a, is a satire and it's a comedy. And, and it still tells the story of Zuckerberg, so Mark Zuckerberg. So I think okay. that's a... That's a funny film. Um, Boogie Nights, the story of the rise of the adults uh, film industry, is, is, I think, a very funny film. Really? Okay. Oh, yeah, I absolutely do. You mean you, I, were, I mean, you, and, were, and, you, you were one of the three people that was actually listening to the commentary, to the, to the lines? Yes. <laughs> just, just check in with you, Manny. <laughs> and then there are others, you know, that I, I, I really liked. Um, I mean, I, I think that there... There are some great films out there that I, I, I didn't mention. I mean, I didn't mention any of the Jack Lemmon and Walter mm. Matthau films. Oh, I didn't mention some like it hot. Yeah. yeah. And oh, like that. no, no, that was Tony Curtis and Jack Lemmon. I'm thinking more like oh. The Odd Couple and The Grumpy, yes. Grumpy Old Men. And yeah. Those well, films. I, are, Manny, good. I, I've got a question for you. Do you think uh, that in recent years, the last 20, 30 years since the turn of the century, maybe? Do you think slapstick has been lost? Well, I think they got to be careful how they approach slapstick because there's a lot of critics of, of violence and, 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 and sexism and other things. So, yeah, I, I think a little bit of that has been lost. 
Um, I'm trying to think of a movie that had slapstick recently. I, I don't, I don't, I can't think of one offhand. Well, you know, but you bring up a good point, and that is as times change, as uh, politics, mores, whatever you want to call it, society changes. What we find funny changes, mm -hmm. and things sometimes become, it's yeah, things become more politically serious. incorrect. Well, I think things become more satirical. I think people have gone away from slapstick, and they now have entered the genre of satire. So you yeah. get stuff like American Hustle, which is very funny in a satirical way. Mm -hmm. Social right. Network, very funny in a satirical way. Promising Young Woman, the same thing. Yeah, these are movies that are that that you smile through the whole film. Sure, but they're but they're more snarky than they are funny. Mm. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Oh, sure. And uh, look, the, the, here's the problem with comedies: there's all forms, all, uh, many many forms of humor, as you, yes. as you point out. So that's why I asked about slapstick. I I couldn't right. remember so, any recently. So, Manny, so I'm gonna I'm gonna turn a coin over, because in our world there's both a heads and a tail. And I'll only ask you for one. Worst comedy of all time. It doesn't have to be to the 30s through the oh. 2000s. What's the worst attempt at comedy for a film of all time in Europe? Wow. That's that, a tough one. That is such an easy answer. Yeah. What? Oh, absolutely. I mean, ab I could give you the worst drama as well, but I'll, I'll just stick with comedy, and that is Ishtar. It was <laughs> awful. Ishtar <laughs> was just, bad. I mean, you had the potential there between Dustin Hoffman and Warren Beatty. I mean, it could have been. It could have been a contender, but instead it was like, <laughs> okay. well, Matty, you, you, you never disappoint. Yeah. You never disappoint. Okay, <laughs> hold on to the drama thing, because did we ever do we the broke. best drama of every, of every uh, decade? decade? I don't think we did. I don't think we have. Let's do that as another episode, okay? And I'm going to warn yeah. you in advance. I'm going to want the the two worst dramas. So you, yeah. You, if you have some research, you can do some research on that. Well, if I can't come up with them, I hope you have lovely parting gifts for me because uh, I don't know what I'm to say. <laughs> oh, you mean to tell them what they want, Johnny? Yeah. Well, thank you much. Johnny, this has been a lot of fun, as it should have been, considering we're talking about comedies. Thank you so much. You bet your life. And uh, <laughs> I'll leave you with one word, Ishtar. Ishtar. That's right. Ishtar. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.